Hey chaps, back in the workshop today. Um, today's going to be a big day actually. Um, all the O-rings and all the washers, as I said in my last video, they've all come through, hence these little chaps here. The dowels are in place, as we talked about the other day. I've got the nuts ready here. Um, the gaskets are on, they're ready to go. This is a little bit tricky when you put the cam chain, sorry, when you put the cylinder head on, we have to make sure that's okay because we've got to feed the cam chain up through the through the middle of the of the head the head's all ready to go on if you just bear with me i'll go and take you over to the head right we're over by the head now um the head's been prepared i prepared this earlier um and um all the valves were ground in or lapped as they say i've worn this up but if you look underneath there you can see they're all ground in polished as best i can um and i think they'll probably be okay i mean the bike's done, well, to be honest with you, I don't know the exact mileage, but I think it's around about 30-odd thousand. But um, it shouldn't be too much, too much wear on the valves and the guys. I've checked them. Um, there is a little bit of play if you rock the valve back and forward in the guide, but it's not a great deal, so I'm quite happy with that. They lapped in okay, so that's all right. I've done a bit of a test on them. Some people, what they do, and I tend to do it sometimes, um, if the valves are looking a little bit suspect, what I tend to do is put the head up upside down, put um, a plug in, an old plug, and then I fill up this whole chamber with oil um, and then see if it shows any sign of leaking down the valve stems. If it doesn't, then it proves that you've got a good seat on each valve. Um, I've done that on this head and it looks pretty good the results were quite interesting to say the least um everything seems to be quite tight on that so i'm confident that i've got a good seat on the inlets and the outlet valves so that covers that bit it's going on to top of the head obviously some things um i don't need to mention um about the way this works if you're not sure then do ask some questions on the on the comments down below but this is a bucket and shim arrangement this i think is is probably what most japanese multis use in the 70s and 80s it is a great idea because to get your valve clearance you just change these little chaps here your shims and as you can see they float in the buckets we call these buckets because it is literally like a bucket let me see if i can get one of those out for you just to show you what i mean just bear with me a tick There's the bucket, look. And the valve sits there. You can just see the valve, top of the valve shim, top of the valve um, stem there. And obviously these little chaps here, the little collets. They, I think Kawasaki call them keepers, but um, I've always known them as collets. And either way, whatever you call them, they do the job. When the valve springs compress, you pop them in. They seat into a groove around the top of the valve, as probably many of you have seen before, and hold it all together. And then, of course, you put your your bucket back into the hole very carefully so you don't scuff it or scuff the walls of the cylinder head where the bucket resides and then of course you just put your shims in now we need to do a check on all this when all this is back together and we do the cams um, I will take a clearance check on every one and I will obviously do a diagram write it all down the clearance one two three four five six seven eight see what they are look at the Kawasaki chart which I will cover in greater detail later and then get the the appropriate shims, probably from Dave at Side Bikes. So that's it. This has all been cleaned up. We will um, clean them up a bit more when it's on the on the actual block. But I'm going to put this on now. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you to spare with us. I'm going to set the camera up, and then we'll try and film it all being put back together. Bear with me. Right here we go, folks. Um, first of all, I should have said this on the outset. Thanks for viewing this, and thanks for coming back. I'm going to move the cam chain now so that it's going to make it easier to feed the cam chain up through the cylinder head. Obviously, the last thing I want to do now at this stage is to drop that cam chain into the tunnel. Now, it might be prudent to stick something through that. I'll just leave it there a second. It's not going to go anywhere because most of it's 
out the top. This is just to catch it in case it decides to move. Right, let's go and get the block. Clean off all the surfaces. Everything seems to be all right. Take that away. Let's go and get the cylinder head. That would be better, wouldn't it? The block's already on there. Now, I don't know if you can see on this, and I don't want to try and block the view, but we're going to lower that now. Just before I do that, I'm going to feed this cam chain up through. I think what I'm going to do there is just feed that up with some wire. I think that's going to be the easiest way to go. Where's my rod? Just got to get that rod. Just in case it decides to move. Right, so the idea now is to wrap this wire round the cam chain and push it up through. Probably should have done it like this in the first place. Now we've got it up through the top before we have any accidents with it slipping. We'll put that over the top. Hook it on the handlebars. Gonna see if I can just show you underneath. Just bear with me a chip, folks, guys. I'm just taking the phone out. <clears throat> a couple of things to watch here. These O-rings will probably stay put. This little chap, on the other hand, could move. Um, I'm gonna lower this down very carefully, making sure. And keeping an eye on this o-ring now the o-ring is pretty good but i don't think it's ever going to be as good as a kawasaki one now lots of people say that it's a good idea to use the genuine kawasaki but these are very expensive i've stretched this a little bit because i know that it's slightly smaller than the recess that it sits in it's been in there now for several days so it's probably adapted to the same size as the recess so the chances of it moving as we lower that head should be pretty small, but we will go very carefully and I should be keeping an eye on that as it goes down. Right, so I'll put the camera back. I'm going to see if I can lower the camera so you can see it close. <clears throat> Can you guys see that? I think you can. I'm going to set it up there. <clears throat> Excuse me, the wobble. But now we've got that there. I hope that doesn't give any flicker. That's probably the best I can do. My hand will probably get in the way a little bit, but you will see it close. So here we go. <clears throat> Just checking the o-ring. The o-ring hasn't moved, but we're not quite down yet, so I'm just going to go and get me rubber mallet.
Just going to check something on the front of that tensioner. Down guys. The earrings in place which is good. Everything's seated well. Slightly up at that end, but that will come down as we put the stuff put the nuts on and tighten it down. Right. Right, now I need to get the washers. Right, this is quite important because as I mentioned earlier, the clearance between these studs and the holes in the block or oil ways, these are copper washers. Can you see them? Copper, and the idea is they go on the two there and the two at the other end because obviously they're oil ways as well and then we can start putting the washers on the rest of the studs So all the washers are on now so now I'm gonna put the end ones on I'm only gonna tighten these finger tight at this moment oh, one's all gone on the floor Pretty boring this bit, but it's got to be done right.
Now there is a very important tightening sequence for these little chaps. I've already checked the threads on the studs and cleaned them up so we shouldn't get any problems going down with the cat nuts but you don't know till you know so I'm going to do these finger tight but what I am going to do is see if I can get the two end bolts which are these you can see them I think they're the last to be talked up and they're not talked to this obviously the same as these <clears throat> right got the um, socket ready I'm just gonna go around these just tighten them up finger tight We'll do a double torque on this. We'll do the first one where we seat the cylinder head home. <clears throat> and then I will do, once I know it's down firmly, I'll then do this, the final torque, which is down to the actual readings in the manual. Just going to go around again and make sure, because as you tighten one end, sometimes it, you can see these are going down a bit further now. It changes the other end. Now I'm going to go and get the torque wrench and I'm going to check out the figures and I'll be back in a while. Right folks, back. Um, this is my crib sheet. I don't know if you can see that. Probably the light may, may not help. But there's two torque settings. You go over it once and you go over, go over it with the first torque setting of 2.5 kilograms per meter i think it is kgs or 18 foot per pound and then the second torque is four kgs or 29 foot per pound so what i'm going to do i don't know if you can see the the numbers there um but that's the torque that's the sequence of tightening down the head and the two bolts on the very end uh which are i think they're five or six mil i think they're six mil bolts they're the very last 13 and 14 so we're going to crack on with that now so the first one was, so look at me, crib sheet, 2.5. Because I tightened one down, they've all become a bit loose. So I'm just tightening them down a little bit. And then I'm going to go down and do the measurement, the first measurement, which is 2.5 kilograms or 18 foot per pound and we're going to start off with number one just check that They're not, it's not clicking just yet. But we need to take it down a little bit or even. We're on number five. Number six. Number seven.
number eight. Number nine. Number 10. Number 11. And number 12. Just going to check something a minute. Now they didn't click on the torque wrench, so I just checked the torque wrench. And it's very close to the point of getting that click, so I'm going to go over it again now with just a little bit more muscle. And we'll start again at number one. Click. And number two. click and number three click and the last big stud number 12 click so they're all down and they're now set at 2.5 kilograms, I think it's per meter, I think it is, or 18 foot per pound. So now we need to take that up on the second torque to 29 foot per pound. So I'm going to do that in a minute. I'm just going to check a couple of things on the manual. All right, we're back again after checking the manual. We're now going to do the second torque run, and this should take it up to 29 foot per pound, which is 4 kilograms. I've checked it in the vise to make sure the torque wrench clicks at that setting. So we'll see how we go. Again, starting off from number one. Click. Number two, click, and finally, number twelve. So now that's left is the two end plugs. End plugs? Two end bolts, I should say. And they need to be torqued down. I think it was 1.2, but we'll check. Right, guys, I'm back on the head. I'm just going to do the, the two end bolts. I think these are 6 mil, and it's a very light setting. It's 1.2 kilograms um, of torque on that. So we'll do this one first. These are going into quite old metal, so I'm a bit dubious about going to the 1.2. That's close, very close. We've got a click.
that we've got to click on that one as well. So that completes the talking of the head. Now it's the camshafts. So I'm going to just put the camera on stop for a while there while I prepare for all that. And then I will come back to you when we're putting the cams in. See you in a minute. Can you guys see that in there? There's a T and there's a scribe mark. It's a bit more than the scribe mark, but it's there. And above it, if I shine a light on it, it should be able to see another mark above the T. Well, that's your timing mark. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well, for those that don't know, that means that this cylinder, number four and number one, is top dead centre. And that must be in place by holding the cam chain and slowly turning this with a 17 mil wrench. And you turn it round till you get T for timing and the little scribe mark by the side of it marked with the mark on the boss, which is slightly above it. There it is. That is very important because if we don't get that, then the timing will be right out. Right, guys, we're back with the camshafts now. Um, I've got a headlight on so I can try and light up the subject, but I've zoomed in quite a bit. I found a way to zoom in on this camera. <laughs> anyway, we're looking at the outlet cam and Kawasaki mark the cam. I don't know if you can see that little arrow there. That arrow symbolizes, I believe, is the first pin. And it goes round to 44. But don't quote me on that. I'm going to check on the manual. Just bear with me a minute. Yeah, it's 44. And the 44 um, pin would be on this side. Let me just see if I can zoom out a sec. It'll be on this side. And I'll show you that in a minute. But what I'm going to do at the moment is just time that up. And I'm going to put some oil on all the bearings so it doesn't run dry. Now, this is obviously an important point because until the engine gets up to a good speed, it's going to take a few seconds for the oil to come up through the oilways and come out. I don't know if you can see those. Can you see those down there? Little holes where the shells are. There's teeny little holes, they're probably about two mil in diameter. And they're the oilways that feed the bearings here on the camshafts. And there's one, two, there's two sets, there's two, two holes there, um, one and two. And the other two are on the other side. And all cams, both cams have that. So I'm going to just put you back down there. I'm just going to stop the camera a sec. Right, guys, back on the camshaft. Um, as I said earlier, what I intend to do now, um, I'm going to turn my headlight on so it might light up the subject a little bit better. Because that, can you see a bit better? I hope you can. Let me just go and have a look at the camera. Yeah, that's a bit better. I mentioned earlier about the positioning of the um, the camshaft and the little, the little arrow there, which points to the first pin. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but that is pointing just here. To the first pin now the first pin is just probably halfway between this surface but don't worry because the camshaft it the camshaft isn't seated down right home yet if you look at this gap here we've got a long way to go before we get this down onto the onto the bearings and we do that with the caps but what i'm going to do at the moment as i said earlier i'm going to oil these bearings on both sides so that the cams don't run dry so just bear with me a minute Get me a little oil gun. Now there's some stuff called anti-scuff paste, which is pretty good. But I haven't got any of that, so I'm just using oil. And I've always used oil. Right, you put it on the top of the can where the bearings are. 
and the base where the shells are. So you've got the caps with the shells and the, the cylinder head with the shells. When you put a fair old bit on, you're normally okay. And I always put a little bit on the lobes as well. Just to, because we'll be turning this over by hand when all the cam timing's done. And the reason we do that is, when you think about it, it's pretty obvious. We don't want a situation where if for whatever reason the cam, the cam timing is out, we don't want any collisions with components where the pistons hit the valves. So I'm now going to put in the second cam. And I'm going to try and match that up where the 44th pin, and I don't know if you can see that, you can't see it. Let me just move the camera a little bit. The 44th pin goes here next to that little in sign. See what it says in and there's an arrow. I'm going to do that now. So just bear with me a tick. You might be out of shot for a while, but just bear with me. So I need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighty-two, forty-three, forty-four. So we're slightly out there. <clears throat> Let me just see if that one is correct. I might need to count this a couple of times, but it's best to do it a couple of times and make sure it's right than to get it wrong. Just gonna go and check something on the manual. I'm going to count that again. I'm just going to check because the manual says the first pin is the one above the one that's on the surface just here. So that's the first pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. 44 so that one there this one needs to have that arrow pointing to it so let's just see if we can change that because it's one out need to move round one there's one now we look at these camshafts there is another little giveaway which I have found out over the years, especially from working on the Z1. If you look at these lobes, they're more or less pointing to each other. And if we look on cylinder one, they would be pointing away from each other. And that's normally quite a good giveaway to give you an idea of where we are. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna oil this cam, the bearings, and I'm going to oil the other side of the bearings on this cam. And then I'm going to think about putting the caps on and closing it down. Okay, let's see how we go. I'll be back in a tick. Right, folks, uh, back on the camshafts. Um, did have a bit of a problem, actually, because the bead blasting has left residue. Just be careful if you get your head bead blasted, aqua blasted, whatever you want to call it. It probably my fault. I should have checked. A lot of the threads that hold the caps on, the bolts weren't going down right, and you gotta be careful because it's very easy to shear one of these off. It's very easy. So I've cleaned out the threads with a tap, and um, also put a little bit of oil on the on the bolt, and it's gone down a lot better. As you can see now, if we look closely. Um, <clears throat> this is on the marker, so you can see that. It's on the marker there. And that's on the 
first pin yeah the first pin is the next pin from the arrow so that works and it's gone all the way around to here and now i intend to close this cap down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put you back on the on the tripod and i'm going to do that with the camera rolling just bear with me a tick don't know how this is going to come out i hope it doesn't flicker but we'll see how we go so we can angle that light a bit better so it's not in your face how's that that might be a bit better right i'm going to put the caps on now and we're going to take it down now it's a bit of a slow process because you need to do it in such a way just like kawasaki say so that we start one and two then three and four five and six seven and eight <clears throat> Just going to get the first cap. These are all numbered. If you look carefully on there, it says three. One, two, three. I tend to screw the bolts in finger tight first just to line everything up. But I'll tell you what I haven't done. What have I? No, I haven't. I nearly forgot. Put the oil in. Nice drop of engineering blood. So that's now going into the bearings. Just to give these a little bit of lube until the engine comes up to speed, which I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> right, so we've ordered the cam. <clears throat> In goes number three, cap. There's dowels on the bolts that must line up. So just take your time, wiggle it a little bit if necessary. Be careful the dowels don't get forgotten. I'm using a very small wrench here so that I don't risk over tightening these bolts just a little bit on each one <clears throat> and kawasaki say that you do them opposite so one two i tend to try and do one or two but also take these down at the same time but let them take the weight because that's what kawasaki say but it's better to spread the load on four bolts than it is two. So that's down a little bit. So now I'm going to put my second cap on. Wiggle it if you can to get those dowels in in their home position. You see I'm screwing these bolts down as far as I can finger tight. Bear in mind you're going against the springs here on the valves because it's trying to push on the lobes. So just be a bit careful. Frames in the way a little bit on this one, but we'll get there.
but don't go don't go crazy with this just very gently So those four have now bottomed out. So I need, need to get these down. These are very close to bottom them out. Yeah, that one's done. Got a tight one here. That one's going to come out. I'm taking it out. Not happy with that. I'm going to take that one right out. Make sure that one's... He's bottomed out. And he's bottomed out as well. Sometimes you see a little bit of squidge of oil come out when you get them down home. Let's see what's going on with that one. Probably not a good idea to undo one like this, but I've got no choice because it's binding. Let's just have a look at the threads on the bolt. Be back in a minute, guys. I'm going to clean this bolt off. I don't know if you can see this, but I've got a tap here, which I'm running down that thread. I know how much I can get away with, but just go carefully if you find yourself doing this. And look at the flute of the tap when you take it out. You can almost guarantee there's rubbish in there it's not so bad on that one so let's just see what happens now with a bit more oil on that bolt let's just see what we got may well be well it's oozed out oil from the base of that cap so I think we're all right right we now need to talk those if we look carefully at the lines it won't really make much difference at the moment but I believe the valve timing is okay because these two lobes are pointing at each other so that looks okay so now I'm just gonna see what we got on the crank I'm gonna do this very carefully I'm gonna take number four plug out so I can see the piston position so here we go and it goes round clockwise Something's jumped on that, which doesn't strike me as very good.
probably because there's no tension on the top so i need to be thinking about what's going on there need to check all this be back later right chap we're back with the cams um done quite a bit whilst the camera was off because i needed to check why it jumped and it's slightly different to the z1 with, with there's many reasons but the first two reasons is we're dealing with a high vo chain we're not dealing with a standard sprocket type chain this is a chain that fits on gears as you can see there so that doesn't take a lot from what i can see um to allow it to jump now i think the reason being was because on the Z1, the chain comes down and goes round an idler sprocket and then it back up. And that helps a lot. But having said all that, after looking at it closely and going back to the, man the manual, um, I rechecked the timing and I've moved this camshaft to where it should be. And I don't know if you can see that there. Where on the, the first pin is there, that one's level with the surfacer. So that's the first pin and it goes right way round. And if I pick you up carefully and zoom in there, we can see that's number 44 there where my nail is. And as I said earlier, one of the ways of checking this is to look at this lobe. This is on cylinder four and that lobe and they're normally pointing to each other. And on, one, on cylinder one, they'd be pointing away from each other. That's always a good check. Now I'm going to show you what it's like as I turn that crank and you can see this all go round. Now I'm going to turn it right way round 180 degrees, then a, a 360 degrees. So we get a full revolution and you should see, you should see the valve timing come back to where it is now. And hopefully we won't have any collisions. Before I do that, though, this is worth mentioning. This is very important. I nearly forgot. Make sure that you um, check your chain tensioner on the back and make sure that it's on. Um, it does say in the manual that you put the pin in the side to stop the plunger falling out because otherwise it can go into the barrel. Sorry, into the barrel and down into the sump, which is, would be disastrous. There's a pin. I will show you that later. Um, <clears throat> once that's in, it's um, locked in the sense that it can move up and down, but it can't go any for further forward that way in relation to the pin because the pin um, uh, basically, how can I explain? The pin resides in a little milled slot, a bit like a Woodruff key in the plunger, which pushes on the cam chain tensioner guide oh that was a mouthful and then i then you put this one on and it must stick out no more than 7.5 millimeters this is the the tensioner which goes in that way and it's a there's a spring in here which pushes on that as well it's a bit tricky to explain um i might go over that in in um not such long-winded ways later with the manual Yeah, this is the cam chain tensioner. I said I'd go over it um, a little bit closer um, whilst I was trying to describe all that waffle when it was on the bike. This is your drawing, your plan view of it, basically. This is the side, the left-hand side of the bike. And um, this is the little pin I was telling you about. It runs in a little recess. You can see that running there on the dotted lines. Now, obviously, when that pin's pushed in and the spring's in there, it, this plunger, it can't come out. Um, but it does say in the manual, be careful about putting it in, because if that pin does fall out, um, they say grease it up to hold it in there. If it does fall out, then consequently, um, this plunger could fall into the barrel and then worst of all, go into the sump. So you means you've got to take the belly pan off and faff around trying to dig it out from maybe um, the crankshaft. That's if you can dig it out. I really don't know. I greased it up and I just wanted to make that point because... A lot of work would be undone if this pin fell out as you put this tensioner in. Um, I think that's probably it as far as that's concerned. Again, any questions, comments, just stick them below and I'll do my best to answer them. But that's quite important. And I found by putting this on and then checking this at the top, all this lot, it does keep the valve timing 
absolutely correct. Uh, see if I can position you slightly better so you can see it. Can you see that, guys? It's not very good light in here. I've had to move the, the LED. So here we go. So we're on T14 at the moment, and we'll slowly move around. Now, before that cam chain jumped. If you look carefully, this lobe is pointing 12 o'clock. This lobe is pointing at 6 o'clock. It's worth noting. Moving very slowly. As we come round. We're now halfway there. We're nearly halfway there. And now you can see both lobes are pointing away from each other. There and there. And on the other side, they are pointing directly to each other, like they would be on this side at T14. So we'll carry on going round for the another, or the other 180 degrees. Everything seems to be okay. There's no resistance as in valves hitting the piston or anything silly like that. And as we come up to T14 on the on the timing mark, which is, I've oh, gone past it, let me just check, which is there. And we can see that that one there is exactly where it should be, pin one. And if we look on this side, you can see that we're on pin 44 there. Where it says in so i think that looking at that i think i'm quite happy to say that the valve timing is complete just one point again the two lobes they're pointing to each other on t14 and the other two at the other end will be pointing away from each other i hope that makes sense do leave comments down the bottom um it's quite a lot to take on board, I know, it's quite tricky, but the trick is here, take your time, count your pins, just watch how you go, and all being well, <clears throat> with these lobes showing you roughly where your timing is in relation to pointing to each other or away from each other, um, and also bear in mind T14 is critical, T14 is where it all starts from, so you can get your pin on the right tooth on this gear for the Hivo chain to pull and time as it should be. Hope that makes sense. And um, I'm going to sign out now. I'll be back later. Right, chaps, we're finishing up for the day. Um, quite a long day. Quite a lot done, actually. Um, just to finish off, what I have done is I've basically drowned all this area with oil. In the cam lobes in the bearings here pumped a load in there um, to help when the engine first fires up hopefully um, you know we don't want it running dry so the idea is is that it will get oil from the little bath in there and uh, get into the bearings until the oil comes up the oil ways and then feeds it but that's it now that's all done so we're slowly moving on um, coming together and um, I'll see you speak to you all well, I won't speak to you all, actually, unless you want to leave a comment, which would be nice. Please do subscribe. Um, please do click a like. I hope you do like it. Uh, helps the channel. And obviously, I'll be back with more. Until then, I'm signing out for today. And I wish you all farewell. Bye.